to look back over 2021, the only requirement as a believer that we really have over 2021 and, and in situations like we just all gone through was to remain in faith. That was the main thing, just to stay in faith. If you stayed in faith, God is so proud of you. He celebrates you. And, and oftentimes we can get through situations like we've all gone through. And one, some people lose the faith. They quit. They get upset. They get mad. They wonder, God, where are you? Have you abandoned us? You go through all these emotions, especially all the turbulence we had. But to get to the end and go, hey, we're still in faith. God is still in control. He's still on the throne. And oftentimes, I kind of said this last week, you know, we'll think God is in control means I'm not going to go through trouble. You know, God's in control. God's in control. So the trouble that I'm going through is either, you know, God or the trouble that I'm going through is not God. And Lord, why am I going through this? You know, and not realizing that, you know, the miracle is in the fire. The miracle is in the water. The miracle is in the flood. And so going through those situations, we have to find, and this really segues into the sermon today, we have to find Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace, the uh, Jehovah Shalom. Now we've gone through so far in the Jehovah series was Jehovah Jireh, which is the Lord God provides the sacrifice. And then Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who turns the bitter to sweet. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my standard. And then Jehovah Shema, which was last week, the Lord is there. You know, that, that was the one where you just proclaim, you know where God is at. He is there. And so getting into Jehovah Shalom today uh, is a, a very big, I, I, I want to say eye opener. I want to say revelation. But speaking on Jehovah Shalom only brings peace. That's what it does. So let's just, just jump right into it. Now, uh, Jehovah Shalom, we, we find in Judges chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Judges 6, starting in verse 1. Now, this is Gideon. And if you, know, if you understand the, the story of Gideon, and, and this is where God redeems Israel once again. And so starting in verse 1, it says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And when I preached this a couple of years ago, I always like to insert this word again. Because this was not the first time. They had did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So uh, the Israelites did evil in the lives of the Lord again. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of their enemies. Okay. Because it says, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves. Now they were, they were hiding themselves in the shelters. Okay. In the shelters, and whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Am Am Amalekites, and other, where did it go? Amalekites and other eastern peoples. It looks like it's cut off. It looks like it's getting cut off there. All right, let me go for my notes. Yeah, Amalekites and other eastern peoples invaded the country. Oh, there we go. All right, let's go into verse four. Uh, they're working on it. All right, invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. They so impoverished them that they're crying out for God for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet. Now, a lot of times we cry out to God for deliverance. And most of the time, almost all the time, God sends a word. Almost all the time he sends you a word. There have been times where daily, you know, I've cried out to the Lord for a question. Within, and then the next day I'll get a prophetic word or a scripture that answers that. All, God always gives me a word for deliverance. And so he sends them, he sends them a prophet. Okay, let me see and where we are. All right. And when the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land and said to you, I'm the Lord, your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. 
but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abysrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. So he's secretly threshing wheat so that the Midianites don't see it. Okay. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak at opera and belonged to Joash the Bizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest of Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait for your return. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat. And from an epaph of flour, he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place it on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and bread. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, alas, sovereign Lord, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Now, back then, if you saw the angel of the Lord or saw the Lord face to face, it automatically meant death. You're going to die. So he just knew, I'm going to die. But the Lord said to him, peace, which is shalom, peace. Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So, it, so Gideon built an altar to the Lord there, and he called it. Now, he called the altar that he built, the Lord is peace or Jehovah Shalom. And to this day, it stands in Oprah at, uh, of the Abysrites. Now, Shalom means, it, it doesn't mean just peace. Okay, oftentimes we can say Jehovah Shalom, and that just means the Lord is my peace. But it really means the Lord is my completeness. The Lord is my soundness. He, the Lord is my welfare. The Lord is my well-being. The Lord is my wholeness. No, it's very, it's very kin to uh, uh, when we talked about Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my standard. Okay, the Lord is the standard, and he is my completeness. He is my wholeness. He is my well-being. He, uh, he is my finisher. He, he is everything that, is, that needs to be done, and uh, everything that needs, that needs to be done is fulfilled in me and complete today. I, I am at peace. I am in wholeness. I am complete. Uh, where I am right now, I am in completeness. Uh, for Christmas, we had, we had the boy, it was a great, we had the whole family over. And, and of course, Super Dude and Juice Man got to see their g that they hadn't seen in weeks. And so they were excited, especially Super Dude. And, and they both know that when they come and talk to g g gives them M&Ms. Uh, Juice has figured it all out. So he walk in the door and all he says is me, my M&M. That's all he just, that's all he wants is M&Ms. So, but, but when they come in the house, especially when, when, when Roman sees Jima, you know, there is a wholeness and the soundness in him where he just feels, I don't, I don't need nobody else. I don't need anything else. Because all I could ever need or want is right here with me now in, in Jima. She, she makes me complete 
and whole. If I'm hungry, she got me. If I'm thirsty, she got me. And if I want sweets and my parents tell me, no, she's going to give them to me anyway. You know, she, she can override mom and dad. You know, I am complete. I am whole. I am sound right now. Where I am and where I stand, I, 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 am, I am fulfilled. I, I have my well-being. And, and then if he wants to, he, and, and she's got him a blankie because he loves the blankets. So she got him this blankie, and, and whenever he comes in, he gets his blankie. And, and whatever TV show he wants to watch, she'll take him upstairs to our bedroom, put him on the little sitting area in the bedroom, and he'll sit there with candy he ain't supposed to have, with, with juice he really don't need, watching his, t- his favorite TV show on repeat with a blanket. He is complete and whole and done. Amen. I'm, I'm done. I'm complete. I'm whole. It is finished. I have, I have met God right here. And, and, and here's the thing. And he knows it. He, he absolutely knows it. That is the, the, the picture of peace. He's not, he's not frustrated. He's not worried. If, if someone comes in the room, he knows, I'll go just tell Jima, and Jima will beat them up. No, Jima would take care of them. You know, they, they have this soundness. You know, we, we talk about Roman and, and, and Brandy, and they talk about juice and me. When Julian comes in, he looks for me. And he'll come straight to me. And, he went, and, he'll, and he'll say, because he'll, he can't say Superman. So he'll say, man, man, up. And man, man will pick him up. Now, no matter what I'm doing, if I got an arm free, I'm picking him up. And if anybody comes to get him, he looks at them like, don't you touch me. Don't you put, his mama came to get him. And he like, uh-uh. Now, his dad he'll go to, and he'll, he'll, he'll play with him, and then look back and come straight back to me. And then he'll want me, now I'm, you know, I'm not as, because I don't want to get in trouble by, by, by Gma, so I won't give him M&Ms unless she say he can have M&Ms, you know, because ain't nobody overriding Gma with candy. So, so, but it's the same picture. You, he, he's complete. He's whole. And he, watch, he, he likes to watch Blaze. So he'll say, man, man, Blaze. And we'll put him in the room. We'll have him watch Blaze. We'll give him his food. We'll give him his, and he's whole. He's complete. He, it's not content. See, because a lot of times we'll go, peace means I'm content. Content means I still have a little bit of frustration. I still have a little bit of pain, but I'm going to kind of ignore it, and I'm going to be okay in my situation. That's not peace. Peace is wherever I'm at, I'm sound in who I am. Uh, the circumstances around me can be crazy, but I'm just complete and sound I'm sound right now. What, what you just showed me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to walk in this. I'm going to walk in this soundness and this completement and, and this it is finished that, that, you're, that, you're, that you just spoke to me. So when Gideon got that, it was, okay, so go in the strength that you have. I'm giving you the strength. He brought him an offering. The offering, he, it was a burnt offering. He said, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is God. This is God. I know this is God. Right now, I am sound. I'm, I'm, I'm at peace. This is Jehovah, the Lord, my completeness. My, my, my completeness. Now, as I was meditating this this week and then this morning, the Lord, kept, as soon as I opened my eyes, the Holy Spirit said, so where does shalom come from? He said, where does it come from? Is it an external measure or an internal strength? Is, it, is there anything externally that can bring, that, that, that gives you peace? Or is it something internally within you? And I said, well, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm assuming it's internal. Is that right? You know? And he said, correct. Peace always comes from inside. You can, be in, you, you can be in the middle of uh, the mall during Christmas, and there's turmoil and chaos going all around you, and still enjoy the holiday and be at peace. 
You, you can be in the midst of calamity and still find completeness and peace. There's, a, there's an intimacy that can, ha- that can happen in that place. When, when, when I used the example when I was teaching on El Roi, and I said, you know, when me and Brandy could be in the store, busy store, people all over the place, but I could look at her, look at her, we can make eye contact and I could see her. You know, and, I, and everybody else disappears. You know, that, ha- that happens a lot of times in a room. She walks in, I look at her. Other times when I'm playing and I miss a note, she walked in. That's what happened. And so, you know, I, I, but there's, because there's intimacy there, then that produces a, a, rac- a relaxation. It's a peace. It's not just calm. Because calm means I've settled down, which is a part of peace. But peace is the, the, the uh, uh, what, do, uh, what do I want to call it? It's the employer of calm. I'm at peace, so I can employ calm. I'm at peace, so I can employ patience. I'm at peace, so I can employ endurance. I'm at peace, so I can employ resolve. Why? Because I'm in, I'm, I'm at total peace. Not with the circumstances around me, but I'm at peace. And this is the big one that, that he hit me with this morning. I'm at peace with who I am in him. I'm just... I'm just completing that. Now, what would that build? It'll produce confidence. And another word for confidence is faith. It'll, another word for to increase your confidence is to increase your faith. Well, how, how do you increase your confidence in your faith? It has to be anchored in Jehovah Shalom, my peace. So that's the, way, that's the only way if we read the rest of the story that Gideon was able to go and defeat the armies. He had to be confident and at peace, especially when he went out there with all these men of Israel and God cut him down, cut him down to just 300 men. He had to be at peace and in confidence with him. Not anything that was external, but everything that was internal. Completeness is only found in Jehovah. And later it was manifested in Jesus Christ. It was found, Jehovah Shalom was manifest. It was, it, was, it, was, it was the person of Yahweh. And later, that completeness was found in Christ. Because remember, I told you, each of the names, especially the Jehovah names, are going to point to Christ. Jehovah Jireh, he was the sacrifice. Jehovah Rapha, he did turn our bitter to sweet. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our standard and Christ is the standard. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there and he is the there. And he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. It's even in one of the names, Isaiah, 6, uh, Isaiah 9, 6, okay, because we just got through with Christmas. And even Charlie Brown quoted this one. For, it, for, to, uh, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and what? The Prince of Shalom. That's, that's who he is. So when we go, well, who, who is our peace? Well, now our peace is found and manifested in Christ. So the Jehovah Shalom of the Old Testament is the Jehovah Shalom in Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. Come on, y'all. He is our peace. He is our completeness. He is our soundness. He is, he, he's our joy but, okay, let me, let me because I'm, I'm going start, to start, start landing this plane. When it means to be in Christ, oftentimes we identify with being out of Christ more. And then we exalt Christ so high that we say, well, he's Jesus, so of course. He's Christ, so of course. Well, the standard, which we just talked about, the standard is to be I'm, I'm walking in Christ. My Christhood, that's a good title. I'm walking in my Christhood. I call it our superpowers. I'm walking in my Christhood. I'm, I'm, I'm complete in him. You know, I, I started practicing this about two weeks ago. I would say, okay, right now, this moment, this second, where I'm at right now, I am whole and complete in him. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be concerned. I'm not going to be frustrated. Because right now, this moment, I can find peace in him. 
I can't control the next moment. You know, I don't know what's going to happen the next moment. But I can take this moment right now and exercise peace in him. That, 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 that makes it so much more sound in who you are. And then another moment will come. Right now, this moment, where I'm at, I find my completeness in him. Jehovah Shalom, I find it in you right now. I try to find three to four of those moments throughout the day now. Well, I could just say that. You know, one of those moments was last night when I was at the grill. You know, Brandy brought me this wonderful, wonderful, amazing Christmas gift. I got, I got, I got great Christmas gifts this year, y'all. And, you know, and I, I just got great Christmas gifts this year. And my wife brought me a, a, uh, a, a, a fire pit grill. So, and I'm cooking it today, but I, I broke it in yesterday with some chicken wings. If you, it, pictures are on Facebook. So she brought me this fire pit grill. And I got this fire pit grill, and my, my daughter, Destiny, she brought me a Bluetooth uh, meat thermometer, which is absolutely awesome. It connects to my phone. So I can, I can put the thermometer in my meat, put it on my grill, look at my phone for the temperature. I was like, this is the best Christmas stuff ever. All right. So when I'm out there last night, I've got my grill going. And, and I'm sitting there, and the chicken's on, and the fire's on. I got my lights on in my yard. And it was just like, man. Now, you know, it was a little cold, but the heat made me warm. And, and, and while I was sitting there, I, I said what I said. I said, right now, this moment, I'm completing you. I find peace. This is just, this is just peace. I'm going to take a moment to find peace. You know, my mind often run, runs through all the stuff we still have to do. You know, what are they doing with the website? I, I, I got to follow up with them again on the website. I got to follow up and get the rest of the new content to the new website. You know, is Google and Apple taking care of everything with the app because I really wanted to get it released by next year? I've got some phone calls that I'm waiting to hear back or some other possible things that are going on. I mean, my mind's going through the list of everything. At the same time, how is everybody doing? Where is everybody at? You know, am I connecting with everybody? Are people logging in? Are they still plugged into the service? What's going on? We've gotten prayer requests from different people. So what's going on in all their situations? Along with the era and the baby's here and Brandy's going to be leaving and helping her and coming back and helping her with her situation. Mama's home. Amen. So we're making sure mama's rehabbing and doing everything she needs to do. And so, you know, we've got all these things going on that we can easily get lost and lose our peace. And each time we've got to find a place to go. Right now, Jehovah Shalom, I find my peace in you. Christ, you are my Prince of Peace. You are my well-being. I am complete in you. Complete in you. So I'm going to share one last thing and then we'll pray. You know, as, what was that? Last week was the great conjunction, you know, and, and, and Saturn and, and Jupiter lined up and then all the planets lined up and all this other stuff was going on. And, and uh, so, you know, as that was coming up, there's different articles on the galaxy, and one, and they were talking about, you know, our galaxy is not the largest galaxy at all. And they were talking about all these galaxies that are out there. And there's this galaxy that's so large. I mean, it swallows up all of them together. And so I'm re researching this galaxy and they're talking about, and it is this many light years across. And so I wanted to know, well, how far across is it in, in what we would consider human years? And this galaxy... If you were to go from one end to the other, it would take you 127,000 years. 127. I told that to Brandy. She said, okay, did you say 127,000? I said, yes. To go from one end of that galaxy to the other end would take you 127,000 years. They, they estimate that when we see a star burst or a star explode, that, that's, that we're seeing into the past because that happened, and they would go, it happened 10 or 20,000 years ago, and the light is just getting to earth for us to witness it. 
Now, when you put all of those different things in the place and all that stuff, I said, you know, our little 80 and 120 years ain't nothing. It, it really is minute. And when you look at the expanse of the universe, and when you look at the stars of the sky, and you look at God and all that he is, you know, it really will make the futile things that we argue about very, very minute. And in reading all that stuff, and during that time, what I found, especially I, I looked at this Hubble telescope a picture of Saturn. That was gorgeous. And it just made me come back to peace. Just find completeness and peace and rest in who you are in him. Don't, we, we spend a lot of time wrestling trying to get into him. And the last point is, I found that I can find my way into Christ by just being complete in Christ. Just resting and being complete in Christ. That is Jehovah Shalom. From there, you can do all things. From there, you can accomplish all things. From there, you can overcome. From there, you can employ disciplines necessary. From there, you can employ patience where you need to. From there, you can create. From there, you can move forward. From there, you can discern. From that place, you can rightfully divide. From that place, you can look at things from an objective standpoint. From that place, you can be at rest and not be swayed to the left or the right. From, from there, you can easily look and maneuver as you need to. That is the place of completeness. So as we're closing out 2020 and going into 2021, find moments of peace. This week, just try to find moments of peace. And it, all you need is a moment. I didn't say take 20 minutes, take an hour a day. Just find a moment where you can find some peace and comfort. If, if it's sitting in the car while it's warming up, find peace. If it's sitting in traffic, find peace. If it's in the shower, find peace. If it's in your bedroom for a moment, find just a moment of peace and watch how you feel. Just that moment will last and continue to last. And if we practice being in the place of peace, then we'll walk from a place of peace. Amen. Father God, I just thank you for being Jehovah Shalom. I thank you for being our Prince of Peace. Lord, I thank you that we find rest and comfort in you. Father, that we'll find moments of completeness and moments of assurance. Lord, that we won't fight to be at that place. That'll be counterproductive. But we will just allow. It'll just be a place of allowing. Uh, in a very noisy world, it is very difficult to be okay with the quiet. We're so used to the hustle and bustle of things. I mean, my goodness, our phones entertain us all day long. That just to find a place of quietness can be disturbing. It could be unrestful because we're so used to chaos and noise. Let us find a place of rest. Let us take a moment and let us get used to it, God that we'll miss it. When we don't have our, I just need my moment of peace. I just need my moment of rest. I don't need an hour. I just need a moment, a few seconds, a minute or two, just to be at peace and to be at rest. To allow my confidence to increase. To allow my faith to increase. So that I can employ patience, calmness, gentleness, so I can employ endurance and fortitude. So I can endure, so I can employ resolutions. So I can think clearly and hear from you, Lord, and navigate appropriately so that I can apply wisdom. I just need a moment of shalom. 
I just need to spend time with Jehovah Shalom. From there, I can go into battle. From there, I know I can win. From there, I know I can win. So, Father, open our eyes to who you are as Shalom. We're leaving this year behind. We're going into a new year. It's going to require us to walk in perfect peace. It's going to require us to think clearly, to speak appropriately. It's going to require us to do more and have more efforts in our life, Lord. We have to have a place of completeness in you to do that. So let that be. Let it be. Father, I speak peace over each home that's watching and every member's home at Deepwaters Community Church. Father, we thank you for their friendship. We thank you for their Christmas gifts. We thank you for the love, their phone calls. Father, we are so honored to be their pastors. Lord, as we go into this new year, let the productivity increase, creativity increase, and let our influence increase. So bless each one of them, Lord, in your precious and holy name. Father, if there's anyone watching who does not know who you are, they don't have a relationship with you. I'm talking about the Prince of Peace. I'm talking about Jehovah Shalom. And they go, I don't have a relationship with that guy. I don't know who he is. But today I hear what you're saying and I'm open to hearing. I want to receive. I want to believe. Lord, I just pray that you open up your heart to them. Pour out your love upon them. Show them your peace. And Father, that you desire a relationship with them. Father, if we can pray for them, that they'll reach out at deepwaters.cc forward slash prayer. That they'll know that we love praying for people and we love praise reports. That brings peace. That brings peace. Thank you, God. And finally, Lord, we thank you for those who are partnering with Deep Waters Community Church in their giving. Father, we thank you for those that continue to sow into what we're building here. Father, we thank you that you continue to increase them, prosper them, show them how, how prosperous they really are and that there is no lack in them at all. Father, for those who need uh, career changes or employment or income, Lord, that you will manifest yourself as that, Lord, as their provision, mighty God. If they're in bitter situations, Lord, Make them sweet and turn things around. Bless each one of their gifts. In Jesus' name, amen.